Hey folks, how is everybody? Um, I was about to do some finish work on this exhaust port and uh, I was just gonna show how I do this and you know, this is the finish step, your polish. Uh, do you have to do it? No, not necessarily, but if it's a work saw, um, you don't really want carbon sticking to the port and you know, polishing will prevent that. I've tore down saws that I've actually milled lumber with and I run 32 to 1 in everything. A lot of the times it's richer than that. Um, and I try to keep a good safe blubber tune on everything. Um, and I've tore down saws right here on camera. And, you know, they might have like a little film. But most cases, you know, the polish looks about like it did when I done the cylinder. But, you know, like I said, this is the finishing step, you know. In most cases, and if I bump the camera, I'm just making the screen light up. Most cases, some you know, most people are going to start with something like this, whether it's a Dremel or a Fordham. Um, I actually have a Dremel flex shaft set up here, and right here's what I keep in it 90% of the time. It's tall cutter bit, but it's like super handy. Um, if you've not used one, I recommend getting one or a couple of them um, but it does have kind of a steep learning curve to it we'll tell you that as well but um, on another note 90 percent of my port work is done right here um, it's called a cartridge roll or you can call it a sandpaper roll but if you're looking for these i'd recommend you type in cartridge roll that's the proper term for it um, you're going to need a mandrel um, these are actually rolls that accept an eighth inch mandrel and then you've got to figure out whether your your tooling is quarter inch which is what this is or an eighth inch which is what would be in a dremel or most knockoff fordhams um they are some fordham ham pieces that you know are the same as the knockoff ones that use the uh i don't think i have one of those just laying here in the drawer um the other hand piece but if you have one, you'll know what I'm talking about. It uses like a drill truck chuck to tighten it up. Um, and you know, Fordham does have a hand piece made that way, but this is the one I have. It accepts eighth inch, quarter inch, and then whatever metric size it is. Um, but what we're gonna use here to do the finish work on this um, is what I've got is a, it's a quarter inch, it's a slotted mandrel. We're gonna start with, a, I think it's probably 120 grit paper. Um, I'll work up to a finer paper. Um, I'm gonna look, it may be. We'll work up to a finer paper and then I'll usually end with like steel wool on it um, with like a little bit of some kind of WD-40 or penetrating lubricant and you know, there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can buy polishing stones. I've done that, but um, I really, really like this method. And you know, you can end here with this. The higher you run it, or the faster you run it, the better the polish is gonna be. And this will help aid in chamfer and the port as well it knocks down any burrs, any imperfections. It does a really, really nice job. And by now you've probably seen the video where I showed, you know, how I'll texture intake and transfers. And, you know, this is one method you can do that with as well. It's stuff you want to take your time on. We're in real time right now. But I'm not going to take this one as far as I would somebody's work saw. Um, you know, it's mine, my own collection. I've got a lot of saws. I switch back and forth between. And, uh, you'll make sure this corner is really good. Carbon likes to get in there and stick. 
and don't be surprised if some of your paper don't chip away or fly off it's all part of it um, but nine out of ten people see if we can get in there on it um, would just be plum tickled to death with that finish there I mean it's a nice finish it is smooth as glass the faster you run that paper and the lighter the pressure you use uh, the better the end result but what we're going to do next is i'm going to go to a little finer paper i'm going to pause you guys while i do that and you know i'll bring you back and we'll take it on a little further all right folks we're back what we've done is we've stepped up to around a thousand grit sandpaper that's a big jump but um and there when they're penetrating lubricant off of the uh desk or bench um we've got it hosed down with that and what we're going to do now is start if you want to run this with a fairly high speed i'm having to do this and walk through a two inch monitor so take that for what it's worth on a gopro <laughs> it's actually not that And, you know, this stuff's really time-consuming. I've watched guys before, you know, they'll pour the whole cylinder in about 20 minutes in a video. And I don't know, me personally, I just can't do it. Um, I've been on this one a couple hours, and I've really not done as much with it as I normally would. I've not even changed the transfer timing nor the exhaust timing at all on it. Um, I have lowered the intake floor but and flattened it out, but... Um, stuff can get super time consuming hopefully lots picking that up um, super nice finish maybe we'll get the light down here a little closer on it really really nice port um, some people can get that light just to get right on that and pick up all the reflection and shine um, i'm not one of them <laughs> maybe we can do this get the light over here and bring you guys over um, there you can kind of get a general idea of how shiny that port is maybe as i bring the light back off of it a little um just really really nice finish on it and there is a you know there's flow chart data out there showing that, you know, a polished port can, you know, it's like 1% more horsepower or something. That's not a lot, but, you know, if you take all of those little 1% and add them up, it does end up being a lot in the very end. Um, that thing's super slick, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to pause you guys and I'm going to show you how to take it a step further, but nine out of ten people is going to leave this cylinder alone um right here where it's at <laughs> all right guys we're back um i'm gonna get my foot around to that pedal move the tripod around a little bit um this is just a piece of like brass wool um that you would find in any cleaning section in walmart or any other store I've got a big wad of it here I kind of got from the kitchen and the house. Um, and I will tell you to wear skin and eye protection because um, this stuff goes everywhere. You know, this is totally unneeded 
what we got there with that thousand is a thousand or twelve hundred grit paper um, it is like slick as glass and again you want to use some kind of penetrating lubricant of some sort in here this stuff does fly off and go everywhere that's why i say to wear eye and skin protection and you know cleaning up and polishing your exhaust port probably will move it like half a degree it may make a total degree of open to close duration and you know that does matter um some people just worry about where it cracks and opens well you know that's all fine determining you know uh, how much compression the saw is going to make and where your peak rpm is going to fall at but uh port duration and total port opening and total port volume you know you have to take it all into consideration on this well it's super slick really hoping we can get this to pick up in the light it is like the camera is just not doing it justice i normally i don't go this far on every saw um there you can kind of see it um super nice finish and when you go to polish and i'm just gonna tell you um you're gonna see any little imperfection in it you might have missed um really nice port there um but you know maybe this helped someone maybe it did and i'm you know i don't care a bit to help another man out um, none of this is a secret um again you know practice makes perfect i'm not the world's best at it but you know i give it my best um but as always you know like i said maybe this helped someone maybe it didn't um thank you guys for watching y'all stay safe and everybody have a good day